first two episodes of the Flip Trip Presents Check Trek, we learned about the turbulent history of Prague and got drunk on the city's beauty. In episode three, we followed in the footsteps of Dr. Jose Rizal to the little town of Litomerice, the home of Ferdinand Blumentritt. We then hit the road for a cross-country tour of the Czech Republic. In episode four, we stopped at Mulada Boleslav and toured the city in a vintage car. Then we visited Olomouc, where nearly every building has some historical significance. Now, we're still on the road. We're told that in Cheske Budovice lies a trove of Filipiniana. But before we get there, we have one hip city to see. In this episode, we visit the cities of Brno and Cheske Budovice and discover that there's magnificent architecture and great beer outside of Prague. I'm Jessica Zafra. I'm a writer and I travel for material. I'm Pepe Jokno. I'm a filmmaker and I travel for inspiration. We're traveling around the world to find the Filipino connections. This is the flip trip. We're now in Brno, the youthful second largest city in the Czech Republic and one of the greenest and most sustainable in the world. To get a real feel for the city, it's best to walk. So that's exactly what we did. We went to the city center to meet our guide. We mostly hear about Prague. Why don't we hear much about Brno? Okay, the city of Prague is the capital, the official capital. Of course, it's a jewel of architecture. Nevertheless, the city of Brno, I think you have to go a little bit deeper in your knowledge. But if you are able to do that, you will be surprised very, very pleasantly. Because it's fantastic in strategically important place. You can reach many historical monuments and uh, natural monuments uh, in one hour or in 35, 40 minutes. So it's a hidden treasure, actually. Yes, and wasn't it awarded one of the greenest cities? Yes, this year we have been awarded the gold medal in the Antan Floral competition, which is the competition of the cities who, who want to show uh, the greenery and the quality of environment and the quality of living in general, I would say. Our guide took us around the historical center of Brno, to the Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul, the market, and he pointed out the abbey where Mendel established the science of genetics. The Guardian newspaper referred to Brno as the city of <laughs> Here's why. <laughs> Pepe and I really like Brno. Unlike Prague, the city has yet to be discovered by mass tourism, meaning that prices are reasonable and crowds are manageable. With cultural institutions, tech startups, and 89,000 university students in a city of only 380,000, it also seems cooler than Prague. Just don't say that to someone from Prague, as citizens of the two cities have a good-spirited rivalry going on. What do Beer and Jose Rizal have in common? Our journey continues up next on The Flip Trip. Cheers. Cheers. Nice job. Yeah, Brno for our next stop, Cheske Budiovice. Now the Czechs love their beer, and Cheske Budiovice, or Budweiser in German, is the capital of that long romance. Upon arriving, we were brought to the town museum. You are welcome, very welcome to Song Bohemian Museum in Cheske Budiovice. Okay, stay with us here. When we heard we were going to a museum, we thought we were going to hear the history of, of beer or something. Instead, we saw things that are so amazing, we got goosebumps. This nondescript building in this little town in the Czech Republic contains well-preserved pieces of the history of the Philippines. Not all tourists are able to see these artifacts, but we were given special permission. 
And now in the library you can see what we have there from Philippine history. There we have a rest of Blumentritz. Uh, Blumentritz Library. So, for example, there you can see the first edition of Fonoli Metangere. Uh, it was dedicated to... Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Can we? Yes, of course. First, we had to put on gloves. Touch it, because uh, that is part of your history. I'm touching Jose Rizal's signature. Signature, yes. Uh, Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas de Morca, uh, with the introduction of Ferdinand Blumentritt, and also with the dedication uh, of Jose Rizal to Blumentritt, my liebe friend, uh, to my best friend. All the books are signed to my best friend. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you can, you can trace where he was. So this uh, Las Islas Filipinas was signed in Paris. This is Berlin. And then this is in... Uh, where is this? Ghent. Ghent. Uh, because in Ghent there was printed Filibusterismo for the first time. What is that? Yes. Uh, there we can see um, the Philippine Republic, uh, Philippine newspapers here in Cheska. Would you Organ of the Philippine people. <laughs> <laughs> So it says, the oppositionists agree with the late Professor Blumentritt, who predicted that Philippine independence would never come from the Washington capital. What we have there, in this oh. table, we have a uh, Rizal uh, portrait. With a different and face. Yes. Very different, very young. You know, it's just that Jose Rizal always still looks different in all of his pictures. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When I see this old uh, photographs. I think that all people were so beautiful. <laughs> and uh, there you can see sketches from Jose Rizal uh, made uh, in Little Mierice by his European stay. He was in Little Mierice uh, only one week. One week. It was only one uh, time when he visited Little Mierice and his friend Ferdinand. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> visited also uh, Luna, or I think that uh, yeah, one Luna. brothers, both brothers, Luna. Recuerdo de Luna, Light Merits, these are, these are sketches by Luna, so they're worth oh, yes, you're a lot. On. You're sitting on a fortune here. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting about Philippine history is that a lot of Rizal's papers are in Spanish, and we ourselves do not read Spanish, because the uh, the Spanish colonial government never taught the Filipinos how to speak Spanish. What a shame. And, and I think so much is lost in translation in exactly. Rizal's works, especially the humor in his works. Exactly. And also, um, the translators have political agendas. It's like, let's, yeah. let's not mention this. Yeah. So they can just casually censor things. Another very interesting uh, is Diary of Ferdinand Blumenritt. Then with drawings? Has, yeah, with drawings. People back then had such nice handwriting. He was first Filipinist um, in Central Europe, maybe in whole Europe. He was a uh, keen on Philippine history. He was an anthropological uh, researcher. He made um, a very large investigation of ethnography of Philippines and uh, linguistic articles he wrote to on Philippine language. His he dedicated were... his work, his uh, life to Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you have the last letter of Jose Rizal. To that is. Yes. This is the last letter that Rizal yes. ever, ever wrote. And then he was killed. Yes. He was executed. Wait, so he knew this. he was going to die. So could you read it to us in English? My lieber brother. Uh, my dear brother. My brother. My dear brother. Uh, when you receive this letter, I will be dead. Oh, God. Uh, tomorrow, 7 a.m. I will be... Uh, I will be shot. Very shot. Grise, gri, please send greetings to uh, all your family, to your wife, Rosa, uh, Lolan, and Friedrich. I love how Blumentritt called his, his uh, youngest daughter Dolores. Yes. Uh, the nickname is Loling. That's oh, so Pinoy. A, so he's dying, but he's polite enough to say, please say hello to your family. And, uh, I, I'm sending you um, a book. I'm, I'm dying. Uh, I'm going to get killed, but P.S. I'm sending what? you a book. <laughs> and what book did he send? Uh, I, uh, we don't know. Maybe it was arithmetic. So that's the question. After uh, the death of Ferdinand Blumentritt, uh, 
Quite all things, uh, all documents and uh, books uh, were translated, transported uh, to the uh, son. Uh, that his son, Friedrich Blumendritt, was also interested in uh, uh, this matter. And that's the reason what, uh, why we have there this collection. So you know more uh, on the history between uh, Blumendritt and Rizal. We left the museum and were brought to the University of Southern Bohemia. Here, the Blumentritt files are being digitized to ensure that they are preserved for future generations. They will then be made available online to students of history. I've never had beer straight out of the tank before. <laughs> no cheating. Okay, no cheating. <laughs> Do you know where the name Budweiser came from? We'll tell you when the flip trip returns. It's good. It's very good. One more thing we had to do in this town, which was to visit a brewery. Though not to be confused with the American brand, the name Budweiser actually comes from Ceske Budiovice. To learn more about the world-famous lager, we went to the Budweiser Budvar Brewery. Here we met an actual beer sommelier. Hello. Okay, I'll see you. Hello. First, we were shown the plant where lager comes from. Then we were shown the step-by-step -step process of turning leaves into beer. What are these Charlie and the Chocolate Factory-like things we see? <laughs> <laughs> it's not chocolate factory, it's a brew factory, it's brewing house, brewing plant. We make in this building, we mix all three raw materials, water, malt and hop. They, in this process takes for 10 hours and we use double decoction. It's all fish in a Czech style. Wow. Double decoction means that this part of the mixture twice boiled for 20 minutes. It costs money and time. Modern ways use infusion. It's very cheaper and shorter. <laughs> so I guess that's one of the things that makes Czech beer different from others. Czech lager is the uh, base of all world, world lagers, but uh, Czech style mean double decoction, fine bitterness of the beer, and uh, long uh, aging in cellars. The beer has uh, light in color, from light malt, deep fermented. This is only a little field for decoration for tourists. Aroma is very fine and smooth. It's citrusy. And it is base, yeah. It is base of uh, drinkability of the Czech style lager this uh, expensive aromatic sad hop. And we buy this hop from uh, this uh, town uh, situated northwest from Prague. So lager is a type of beer? Yeah, lager is How many hop. kinds of beer are there? On international beer competition are 90 categories. But it is, in my opinion, it is, it is only so nine, 10 categories. <laughs> but you said that there were two major styles according to the fermenting process. Top fermented beers and uh, bottom fermented beer. The lager is bo bottom fermented, bottom fermented beer. Okay, this is a hop plants, hop field. Yes, right now it's November and the uh, harvest time is uh, early, early uh, September. But, but this is what goes into the beer. No, but it is a little bit uh, yellow, a little well, bit dry, a little bit fresh. Hop is uh, brown, uh, is green. This hop color, but it just smell. You know, when, you, when you when you want to feel, you, know, ah. you need to cut it. You can see the hmm. yellow powder. And this yellow powder is very aromatic. Let me introduce you our aroma trails. It's uh, called Czech malt or Pilsner malt. Light in color, they smell very fine. Taste too. It is, we use it, this, this malt for light lager, strong lager for light beers. This malt is a little bit darker. It's a Bavarian or Munich malt. When you taste it, mm, try it, grain. You eat it? Yeah, it's possible to it's eat. Green. 
because uh, uh, barley, barley is hard, but this is uh, um, very you know, soft, mm, the sweet and taste. Malt is very caramel taste and this coffee taste. Uh, I use a mixture of this four malt for dark beer, for this, this beer. This beer is not so extremely sweet. It's a little bit hard, stronger, bitter than light beer, and uh, has strong coffee taste because I use a um, strong part of uh, roasted malt. And this unisex beer is not only for women. <laughs> uh, this is not the same beer that is sold in the United States during the Super Bowl. The American Budweiser uh, start product, product beer of Czech style, Budweiser style, in the uh, year 1867. Okay. We, in a town České Bugiovice, we produce beer since year 1265. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. 600 <laughs> years earlier, yes. After prohibition, after 100 years, the taste of the consumption changed and the uh, American Budweiser uh, taste right now as taste. And our Budweiser is the same in 125 years. But it's um, all beer is good, but uh, right now, in after 150 years, it's uh, another beer, another style, but name is same. Of course, the highlight of the trip had to be the drinking. We were brought to the cellars to sample beer straight from the tap. There is no better way to enjoy beer than ice cold and fresh from the source. It's good. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> I never imagined myself drinking beer in a basement straight out of a tank. So that's our thing now. When we get back home, we'll say, oh, oh no, thank you. We only drink Czech beer. <laughs> what does that 12% mean? It means uh, original concentration of malt sugar in the, in the world. It uh, depends from strong strongest of the beer. Okay. Because it's unfiltered, you can you can feel so haze in the beer. It is a, it is a yeast and uh, some uh, some haze from the hop and uh, proteins. We filtered it for uh, finally filling to cask or uh, bottle, bottle. Okay, the beer is smooth, fine, uh, fall now. It's very smooth. Yeah. Yes. Nice no crappy. It's the best after, after 60 or 90 days, it's excellent. But uh, this unfiltered beer is for me the best in the world. In the next episode of The Flip Trip, we end our journey in the Czech Republic in one of the most beautiful fairy tale towns we've ever seen, Chesky Krumlov. Watch more at thefliptrip.com and look for us on Facebook and Instagram.